In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Join me in prayer. On my heart, imprint your image, blessed Jesus, King of grace, that life's riches, cares, and pleasures never may your work erase. Let the clear inscription be, Jesus crucified for me. Is my life, my hope's foundation, and my glory and salvation. Amen. Amen. If you could turn to page 325 in your hymnal, we're going to recite together the fourth part of Holy Baptism and where it is written. Page 325. <clears throat> what does such baptizing with water indicate? It indicates that the old Adam in us should by daily contrition and repentance be drowned and die with all sins and evil desires, and that a new man should daily emerge and arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. Where is this written? St. Paul writes in Romans chapter 6, We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. I love the the baptismal certificates we have for all of my children. I have a great friend in Illinois, a former member, that uh, create, that took Pastor Wolfmuller's baptismal certificates and blew them up on big pieces of canvas for us. And they're massive. And we have them going down our staircase as the boys come down from waking up in the morning. And in between each of their baptismal certificates, which says the date they were baptized, their godparents who did the baptism, in between each of these lovely certificates, it has a crucifix in the middle of each one. And I love these, but there's one thing I wish I could do to improve them. I'd love to put a spritzer in there. Something like every time you pass it, it's like one of those, uh, what are they called, the air fresheners, like the blade, one to go like that. So whenever you pass it, it just spritzes you with some water. It reminds you of who you are in Christ. You are baptized into Christ, a child of paradise. That's who you are. You are no longer a slave of the devil. You are no longer a citizen of the world in a worldly sense. Yes, we're still here. We still have one foot in the kingdom of the left, but we are no longer permanently here. This is not the inevitable place for us. The world to come is the place for us because of who we are in Christ. We are children of paradise, and we have to remind each other of this every single day. Pastor Daniels can support my statement here. In the Pastoral Care Campaign, which is a lovely little book every pastor, at least every good pastor uses, there is this verse, this passage from Romans 6, but it's only used in two sections in that care campaign. The first one is in the rite of holy baptism, and in the second place is in comforting the bereaved. Comforting those who have lost the love. It centers around death. Because in the waters of holy baptism, you are drowned and put to death is all sin and evil desires so that by the work of God, by His 100% work, none of your own, God is the one who does all of it. Your sin is put to death and you are free from sin. And this is more than just being forgiven your sin, for that is the reality. You as a baptized child of God are no longer condemned for your sin, but you are forgiven in Christ for your sin. And because you are forgiven, you are set free from what sin does to you. You are set free from the reality of the problem sin caused in your life. The anxiety, the worry, and the stress, the anger, and the jealousy, and the envy, the animosity, the memory problems. Sin always remembers. Isn't that the fun part about how someone has wronged you? You remember it all the time. It's so easy 
to remember a wrongdoing, and the devil wants you to remember it. He wants you to remain sorrowful. He wants you to remain hurt. He wants you to remain outraged and offended by someone else. He wants you to remain burdened. He wants you to remain alive in sin rather than dead to it because he knows the problems it causes. Praise the Lord. Christ has claimed every single one of your sins. He's claimed every active sin, meaning those sins you've committed against others, and every passive sin, those sins committed against you and what they do to you. He's taken all of those and put them to death on the cross. So now in the waters of holy baptism, you die with Christ, that you may live this life with Christ and live the life unto eternity with Christ. For every day, in the forgiveness of your sins, repentance and forgiveness, you are drowned and die. And you come back to life according to the grace and mercy of God in Christ Jesus, your Lord. So maybe repeat this little section on baptism every day. Knowing who you are. You are not a child of the devil. You are not a slave of the world. You are not the old Adam. Yeah, the old Adam is still around, but that's not who you are. You are Christ. You are the new man. You are the one who lives in righteousness and purity from font to grave and unto eternity. So be at peace, my friends. You are set free from sin. All cares and worries put to death. For you are Christ, and he is yours forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen.